thank you for participating in the Luna licensing program. Anno 2205 is... Hang on, is that how we're going to say that? 2205, because right, we never said 2005, did we? But then again, 2205, that's just a bit too much, it sounds wrong. You know, I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone say the full name of this game out loud before, and I've listened to the devs talk about it. I'm really happy to be here today. Finally, we are able to show off our game. I'm really happy today that we are able to show off the game. I'm just gonna have to risk it. Anno 2205 is a city-building game about colonizing the moon. You see, in the future, things are different. There are flying cars, a constant, often crippling demand for energy, and the world is controlled by giant corporations. Okay, well, the flying cars thing is new anyway. And as a result, humanity looks to its moon to provide new resources, which is where you come in. As the proud owner of your very own corporation, which is much simpler to set up than you would have thought, your initial goal is to get up there and carve yourself a slice of lunar action. And that takes some work. In fact, the preview build that I've been playing for around five hours now actually stops just as you get there, which felt like a bit of a tease, but only because by that point I was really invested in the idea. I started out with a big empty plot of land like this, building a road network, homes to attract a population, then meeting that population's needs for food, water, electricity. They played like many city builders do to start with, but eventually you unlock another region in the Arctic, which is where things start to get interesting. You set up an outpost there to start collecting materials buried under the ice and you'll need them to get into space and for some reason this involves giant robot spiders. Sure, why not? And there were a couple of reasons why I enjoyed this part of the game in particular. First of all, it's just quite fun to start a new settlement from scratch. By this stage, my island metropolis was getting big and complicated as it should be and so it was nice to take a breather and start again with a new blank canvas, taking some of the ideas that I'd learnt from playing so far. But as well as that, I really liked that the two settlements needed each other. My Arctic venture was providing all these new materials for exciting tech, but my island metropolis was the real moneymaker. It was funding pretty much everything. And also, both settlements need certain things from each other to progress. Simple stuff, like you can't grow fruit in the Arctic, so you'll need to do that back in the warmer island climate, and then set up a supply route. And you're soon jumping in and out of both of these settlements and making sure everyone is getting what they need. And that right there is Anno's greatest strength. Colonizing the moon is a brilliant angle, and that's why I wanted to play this game in the first place, but it was this idea of multiple, mutually dependent cities that kept me interested. And presumably, as you reach the moon, this only becomes more and more important. You also have the option to spend quite a lot of credits purchasing additional temperate and arctic territories, and I don't know exactly how big and complex this will eventually become, but there seems to be an enormous amount of potential. It's definitely the biggest Anno game so far. In some ways, it accomplishes what the SimCity reboot once promised, although I'm yet to feel as restricted. Managing the limited space feels a bit more like a puzzle here, as you kind of strive to make everything work together as efficiently as possible, but importantly, way more importantly, the main barrier between you and getting more space to work with is just money. It feels more like a design decision rather than a technical limitation. So yes, there's plenty to like about the city building. Anno 2205 does it well, and it feels refreshingly different to other games in the genre. And yet for some reason, that's not quite the entire game. It's almost like Ubisoft needed just a couple more bullet points to fill out their list of features, and they ended up with, well this, for a start. Naval combat. Really boring naval combat. Pitting you against the bad guys that live on the moon, you're encouraged to play through some Below average real-time strategy bits, you select your ships, you right-click to move, right-click to attack, pick up power-ups that float around in these little glowing boxes. The whole thing just feels half-hearted. I can't believe anyone truly wanted it to be in the game. Mercifully, I was only forced to complete a couple of these throughout the preview, and although I had the option to replay them on harder difficulties to access rarer resources that I could use elsewhere in the game, I just, I just didn't want to. And then there's these side missions as well. They exist around the city building, and usually have you traveling around the map in your command ship, completing the most mundane tasks you can imagine. Seriously, I'm building a mega corporation to colonize the moon, right? Why the hell are you asking me to collect crates? Madness. Unfortunately, you will likely need to do this stuff as it's too profitable to ignore and usually necessary to unlock map-specific uh, structures like this one. An outlawed AI system lost beneath the ocean. That sounds really cool. Why are you making me fetch crates to unlock it? So there we are, Anno 2205, an enjoyable city builder that tells you right away you're going to build a city in space. But first, you'll need to earn that privilege, and you know what? That part is pretty fun too. A couple of unnecessary additions at the end there, which is a shame, but they're not enough to put me off returning to this game in November and taking one small step for man. 
as well as one giant leap for Brett Corp. Thanks for watching. I used to think that the only thing tying all the Far Cry games together was the hang glider, but that was before I'd spent an unhealthy amount of my time immersing myself in a web of theories that, if you're open-minded enough, tie the whole series together and maybe, just maybe, point us towards a potential setting for Far Cry 5.